Hey guys, today we're going to talk about lines and how to create values with those lines. Um, this is the finished product that we're going to work on. I use Micron pens, um, the, the pack that has like a 005, 01, all the way to 08. And when you start, you can use the thinnest one. This is a 005, and that gives you the lightest value that you can um, that you need. Okay. So you have to look at your image and you have to look and see like where is it the lightest, where is it the darkest. Um, and then 005 gives you some confidence when you're starting to lay down some strokes. Because if you're choosing something and it's light, like this um, sculpture right here, you can use a 005 in hatching, some cross hatching um, lines, and then you can get a sense of volume and it's still a light item. So I would definitely go up in number. This this one is a zero one. So before it's a zero five that we're using, but this is a zero one. And this allows you to get a little bit darker um, with less work. So the darker number or the darker value you want, you're going to use a higher number. So I have all the way up to zero eight. Um, but I like using the 005 for light things, or at least when I get started, so because it gives me a sense of confidence, because it's ink, so there's no erasing ink. And that's one of those things where students get very fearful, is because they cannot undo it. Um, so I would suggest always to go light, and then progressively get darker um, as you build your confidence. Now, when you're working on this, you will need to look at your reference image and think, okay, where is it dark? Where is it light? Where is it medium? And, you know, I would probably do a zero one, lots of places. And then let's say if your like medium color gets a little bit darker, then I would overlay some more value. But then I wouldn't touch the area that's already light. So the top of the seat, I'm not going to touch any further. Because I know that I need this to be to remain white, whereas the arm and the back of the seat, I might go a little bit darker later on. Like the bottom of this, or I mean the armchair right here, I might leave light in some areas. So here on this side of the chair, it's going to be light. So I'm just kind of hinting at the fact that it's there, and remember. If you are using your line strokes and they're farther away from each other, it gives a, an appearance that it's a light value. So if you want a value that is dark or it looks dark, you need to make those lines as close as possible. Um, so you can see that in some of my um, areas on the chair. When it looks dark, it just means that I went really close to each other. The lines are really close to each other, so it looks dark. All right, so. This is my 001 that I'm working on. Just kind of give things a base overlay color. And then I will um, get a little bit darker as I go. So it just gives me a sense of confidence um, because there is no undo button. So I'm going to look at my shadows, um, at least kind of figuring out where they are in the composition. I'm going to pull out my 08, which is the darkest uh, or the thickest line weight or the tip that I have. And I'm using it in areas like the crevices of these doors because it's going to be a little bit darker there. I'm going to emphasize some of my dark areas, maybe the corner of my chair, the inside of this chair. Um, the shadow side of any item or any area that I have, maybe right underneath where that um, cushion will be. So the floor areas as well. Now if you look at it, you can see that the tip is bigger. Um, so that means you just have less work to do in order to, to make it a dark value. Um, there's some kind of pattern in the rug, so I'm just going to give that a little bit of you know, horizontal strokes. 
So I have a tendency to kind of go everywhere on my composition. I know some people just work, you know, if they're right-handed, they work left to right, and they're very good about that. I cannot seem to do that. I just kind of go wherever I feel like going, but I try to remember my values. That's, that's what drives my compositions. I like to see a range of values, and, and that's what I do. And sometimes you'll get tired of an area and just go to another area. Just come back whenever you're ready. And here, I'm trying to look where the shadow is, and I'm going to go a little bit darker. And again, I'll use tight little lines because I want it to seem like um, a darker area, but I don't want to um, mess up my pattern either. So I, I will, hopefully you can see both the shadow and the pattern. Okay, so when you are doing wood grain like here, it is basically caffeine hand. When you're a little bit shaky, you haven't had enough food to eat, your hands are a little shaky, that's perfect for making wood grain. So it's not um, stylized, it's just a little irregular. Something that has a rough texture. So that's how I do my wood grain, is do a little bit of caffeine hand, um, do a little bit of slightly rolled pen, but uh, that's about it. And then you can keep going and then where the shadow occurs, you're just gonna come back with some vertical strokes in the direction of your wood. So that's how I do uh, my shadows. Now this part of the wood is actually going side to side. So you're gonna take a look at you know your reference image at all times. Now, probably I'll come back and visit that, but that's fine for now. Um, again, I've mentioned this before, I kind of hop skip and jump around my composition um, because I guess they get bored easily but um, again you're gonna look at you know where's it dark where's it light where's it medium if you want something to look like it's lighter in value you're gonna have more space in between your lines if you want something to look darker you're going to make your lines really tight together um, you can play with you know, different line technique like hatching, cross hatching, stippling, scribbling. Um, in this composition, I mainly have used hatching and cross hatching uh, because uh, this is just the texture that I'm trying to hit. Um, if I had something like more coarse or maybe greenery, I maybe would use some scribbling. Or if I had um, my carpet, I could use some stippling, but I'm okay with using hatching and cross hatching. So it's really kind of up to you and what kind of texture you're trying to hit. Um, and you can do hatching in different directions. Like I have a lot of vertical lines here. Um, sometimes like the my pillows, I have it uh, going at an angle. Here on my window treatments, I'm also kind of combining hatching and cross hatching so that is kind of dependent on what you want it to look like and then right now I'm going you know giving everything a one pass trying to figure out the rhythm of like the winter treatments how it'll be dark some areas it'll be light other areas so I'm trying to figure out that rhythm and I also want to make sure that my the lighter areas of my back cushion um, have contrast with the window treatment so I'm trying to make sure that happens and then I'll come back and give it another pass and go darker wherever the folds will will appear so here this is a darker value here I'm trying to get so it's a little bit darker so that would be a zero eight And then you keep on working on it until you're happy with it. And that's about it.
All right, so now you have seen how I approach a line technique project. Um, you always want to make sure you're hitting the range of value. You want to make sure that you're trying to hit some kind of texture and um, that's about it. And you can come back and, and work on it and take a moment, look at it from a distance, see if it catches your eye, if you need more value contrast, and if it means you just need to go darker and have some areas that are light. Okay, I hope that helps you and I'll see you next time.